Example 3 reads, the radius of a cone is increasing at a rate of 5 kilometers per minute. If the height of the cone is always twice the radius, find the height when the volume is increasing at a rate of 640 pi cubic kilometers per minute. I think I'm going to start by drawing a diagram of a cone. I'm going to label the radius of this circular base R, and I'm going to label the height of the cone H. Now I want to generate a list of the things that I know and the things that I'm trying to find. It says in the first sentence that the radius of the cone is increasing at a rate of 5 kilometers per minute. So over time this radius is changing. So I'm going to say dr dt is equal to 5 kilometers per minute. The next statement says the height of the cone is always twice the radius. Find the height when the volume is increasing at a rate of 640 pi cubic kilometers per minute. So I've generated the list of givens and things that I'm trying to find and I'm going to offset them in a green box. Now I'm going to think about the formula or equation which is going to relate all of these things together. And that's going to be the volume formula for a cone. Volume equals one-third pi r squared h. So in this problem, there are three variables, a v, an r, and an h. And what I want to ask myself is, are all of these variables changing over time? Well, I know that the volume is increasing because it tells me so in the last statement. The volume is increasing at a rate of 640 pi cubic kilometers per minute. So I know the volume, the V, is changing. Now the radius is also changing because they tell me that in the first statement. The radius of a cone is increasing at a rate of blah blah blah. What it says though about the height is that the height is always twice the radius. So that's fixed. It's always twice the radius. Now if something is fixed like that, I can plug that in in the beginning before I take the derivative. So I'm going to go ahead and replace h with 2r because h is always 2r. Cleaning this up, I end up getting volume equals 2 thirds pi r cubed. And these are just all rewrites of the original problem. I still have not taken the derivative, but now I'm at the point where I'm going to do that. And I need to remember that when I take the derivative, it's going to be with respect to time t. So the derivative of v with respect to t is going to be dv dt. The derivative of 2 thirds pi r cubed is going to be 2 pi r squared dr dt. Keep in mind that this 3 here is going to leap down in front and be written here. And the 3 and the 3 are going to cancel out and that's why we're just left with this 2. Okay, at this stage of the game, I'm actually going to substitute in from the um, clues in the green box. dv dt is 640 pi. Now according to this setup, I'm going to end up solving for r. It's the only thing that's left because dr dt is given to me to be 5. So my game plan is to solve for r. And whatever I get, I'm just going to double, and that's going to give me h, which is really what I want. So at this stage of the game, I'm going to say 640 pi is equal to 10 pi r squared. The pi's are going to cancel out. And if I divide both sides by 10, I get r squared is equal to 64, which means that r is going to equal 8. Now if r equals 8 and I plug it into this formula here, h is equal to twice r, and r is 8, then I get that h is equal to 16. Now the height is not a volume, so it's not going to be cubic kilometers. It's not an area, it's not going to be square kilometers. The height is just a linear amount, so it's just going to be kilometers. And it's important that you consider the units before you move on to the next question. 
So our objective was to find the height, and the height ends up being 16 kilometers.